The UK is a world leader in scientific research and development, particularly in areas such as clean technology, biotechnology and pharmaceuticals. And that means plenty of opportunities for the pupils of today in STEM-related careers. But research by the CBI has shown that the UK needs to double the number of STEM graduates in the next seven to ten years, or see some skilled jobs disappear. And that's why what's happening at schools like this one here in South London is so important. I've come to find out what it is they're doing to encourage 11 to 14 year olds to consider STEM careers. Here at Riddlesdown High School, they're focusing on economic well-being, a key component of Every Child Matters, and providing young people with the skills to be economically secure in their future careers, financial capabilities, happiness and sustainability. On your table, you have some instructions about what we're going to do today. And the school is running a workshop that brings up a range of issues affecting an imaginary community. And you are having your monthly committee meeting. The pupils have been split into four groups. Each group are playing roles of members of a local residence association. They're meeting to discuss proposals to build offices of a pharmaceutical company on a brownfield site near to the school. What's great about this exercise is that it pushes pupils to consider the importance of STEM careers to the economic well-being of their community. Your job is, as the committee, to decide whether or not to back the proposed development or to try and persuade the council to choose another course of action. They all had an individual role and they all had cards um, briefing them um, what their position was on the role. So some of them were for it, some of them were against it and they basically argued it out between them. Is this plant safe? Is it going to be any danger? I think uh, it's kind of a bit of a waste of money. But... We're making the stuff and that's costing us a load of money. And then we're sending it to other towns and getting all that money back, so yeah. that's actually quite a good idea. Yeah. Well, we might so have to raise taxes or so something. We'll do, the money We'd have to build new roads, which would involve a lot of time. By moving the factory to another area, it's not really getting rid of the problem, is it? It's so really... what you're saying, like, we're going to lose all the population. We're going to... to help the pupils get into their roles as residents, they aren't wearing school uniform. The activity is working so well, it's led to some heated debate. They're in, they're in a zoo, that doesn't count. Yeah, but you can't put, can like, butterflies in a zoo. Like, a lot of tourists who pay a lot of money to come to our town to see the environment and all the clean air well, and, like, the river. And different. if you're ruining that, then the animals are going to die. The tourists are not going to pay money to get here. They were really, really excited and, and interested in, in, in doing this, um, um, to take part in a role play. Um, and they were very excited about having the different roles and taking on board those uh, characters and put, arguing their case. These factories, they're going to be like giant funnels with smoke coming out. Why make a big one? Maybe make a smaller one. Bigger. Yeah. Bigger. Yeah. Bigger. If there's a 50-50 like, charm, like from the community, what would we go ahead with doing? They were very aware of the community's thoughts about the environment, the co cost implications of setting up in, in a town, and jobs, how those would be created, pollution, noise pollution, traffic. So areas of science um, related to, to real life situations um, that are a bit out of the box and out of the classroom. The school is on the edge of the North Downs, so environmental concerns are paramount. But also, the pupils need to consider the advantages the development could bring, such as providing science-based jobs in the local area. So, we are going for it, but it has to be smaller, not far from the town, and it will give people coming out of uni, who have a degree in medicine, jobs. Because we're like 50-50 on whether to go ahead with it, we should ask the community. It's going to affect them, and it's up to. I think it's up to them if they want pollution. But when we have our um, vote, we have three for it and three against it. So we thought we would um, broadcast the vote in different ways. We could put flyers, posters, radio, computers, emails, TV. Broadly speaking, it sound. Who's for it? Put your hands up if you're for it. I'm still for it. Okay, put your hands up if you're against it. I'm very, very Right, okay, so it's a, it's a split split decision. And Megan very, feels very... Vote. The chairman gets a cast of vote. Megan's got very strong feelings on this, I can see. Okay, and she's saying she's going to walk out of the meeting if, if the decision goes for this. I think what you're finding out is that there's 
no right answer and it depends on what viewpoint you take and particularly with the roles that you've been taking so that if you've stuck in those roles of, of representing that viewpoint there really are lots of different ways of looking at it. So how useful is it doing role play for an activity like this where you're looking at business issues, you're looking at environmental issues, you're looking at science issues? It's actually quite good instead of like doing book work and stuff yeah. you have to like experience it like it's it you it to understand what the yeah What's impressed me here is how the pupils have really got stuck into the complex issues raised by this activity. But there's also an underlying understanding about the importance of STEM skills, not only for jobs in the community, but for making community decisions. And it shows that pupils can be engaged in STEM issues in a fun and relevant way. While the pupils have been discussing STEM issues through role play, staff at the school have been discussing the challenges of promoting STEM careers in the classroom. The careers coordinator has set up regular meetings, bringing science, technology and maths teachers together. So what kind of things have been going on for um, bringing STEM career awareness in, into the classroom? Particularly for myself uh, during DT, it's made my, my year nine classes, I've tried to make them a lot more applicable to careers, particularly because the year nines are going through their options choices at the moment. So they're very keen to know what's product design going to be like in year 10. and I've, very much relating it to where you're going after product design rather than what you're going to do during that bit. How important is it, yeah, that, that, that the pupils see the staff working together because they then it then helps them make the connections and, and, and see where these things can lead? I think it's really important because they go from science to maths, you know, and you make them do a graph and they don't they don't think about the fact that they might have just done it in maths mm -hmm. or vice versa. So I think if they can see that we're working together, that that really does help them make the link. One of the problems the school found was that staff simply didn't communicate about STEM. Even in the staff room, they sat in separate groups. I yeah. think we're still working independently, though, not mm, as, sure. uh, as groups. So the technologists are going and the scientists are working on their own. So. But what, what have been the positives, the things where you've thought, oh, this is why we meet and this is what we can get out of it? It's actually speaking to staff directly, you're getting a better idea of what they're doing and how it actually the closeness of the links, and you get to find out what it is that they're doing and how they're doing it and where can there be possible collaborations at a future date. And if you are getting people in to talk about subjects rather than saying, oh, these are the science people and these are the maths people and these are the tech people, if, if there is a sense that out there you do use the subjects together and they have that sense of starting to use the subjects together in, in school, then that presumably would be, be beneficial. Well, it would avoid repetition as well, because I'm sure that we just all go over the same thing mm -hmm. and teach it again and again in a different, slightly different yeah. way. And if we worked together and actually realised that we were doing that and planned a time in the year when we could teach those things, then we would avoid the repetition mm -hmm. and we could probably push the students a bit further. Back in the hall, it seems that the role players already got some of the key messages about STEM careers across. Of the sort of subjects that you are doing at school, which ones are useful to understand what the issues are in this role play? Science, 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 science. maths, because we were thinking about how much it would cost and like how far we were going to like put it in the countryside. Maths and D team. What do you think you've learned by doing this? It's harder to make a decision than what it actually seems especially when it's like a big decision. Do you think it, um, having a good knowledge of science would help you make a decision in this case? Yeah. yeah. Understanding the importance of STEM subjects is one thing, but the real issue for pupils is getting the right advice. A new study of pupils conducted by the universities of Derby and Warwick has shown that 84% of Year 7 and Year 9 pupils surveyed would like to find out more about careers in at least one of the STEM subject areas. Not only that, but 80% of Year 7 pupils say they'd turn to family members for advice over their subject teachers, a problem staff at Riddlesdown are all too aware of. I've been teaching science for 38 years. I don't feel I have any confidence um, in teaching careers in science. I feel fine to teach science, thank you very much. But I've got some idea about the careers that are available but not how you get into those careers or the value of those careers or how to compare one career to another. I mean, we, as far as science teachers are concerned, I think it's fair to say we have careers teachers to do that. I'm not 100% sure really about the full STEM careers that are available um, and nor are the teaching staff. And to be quite honest, I imagine a lot of the science staff and maths staff are not even necessarily aware of, um, of careers. Which is why this STEM meeting group is so important. 
What we need to do is we need to get talking, don't we? Um, and we need to have squads of science teachers and DT teachers and maths teachers sitting around and talking about about what what we want for the future, what we want for the future of the country, not just our pupils, but the country, really. Back in the main hall, and the students are getting ready to sum up their findings and reveal their decisions. I'd now like to ask the chairpersons to feed back to the group to tell us what their opinions were and what they finally um, concluded as a group. In the end, we did decide to do it, uh, but after a few things like a chemical blast happening, a uh, pollution, wildlife. If they do what we want them to do, then we're, we're for it. We decided to split it into two sites, so there'd be one with a manufacturing um, site with no wildlife and it would be a disused area, mm -hmm. and one site with all offices and distribution, so it brings jobs to the area. Excellent, well done, Kismet. We were going for it, but it has to be near to a town. It will give people coming out of uni who have a degree in medication a job. We thought about the jobs which they could do and how much money it would cost. And in the end, we decided that we were for it as long as the factory was built a bit further away from the town so it didn't pollute our town as much. <laughs> OK, so your group did have strong views, particularly Megan. How did that impact upon your decision? Environment was probably the biggest issue because of all the pollution and the habitats around the SSSI ha habitats. And Excellent. I think they thoroughly enjoyed the activity. They really seemed engaged. They um, it ignited a spark in a lot of them. They were arguing out their case for and against. And they came up with some great ideas, ideas that um, I was quite surprised at, seeing they were year seven pupils. And I think it just goes to show that if you do give them an activity, something a bit different, they can um, use all their skills from science, technology, maths, and bring them all together into one activity. Well, thank you very much for letting us come in and share the activity with you today it's been really really interesting for us but I do have a couple of questions I would like to ask first of all how many of you think that science maths and technology are important subjects to have to get a good job excellent how many people would like to find out more about the kinds of really interesting or well-paid opportunities there are that come from stem qualifications who'd like to find out more Super. Thank you very much indeed. What's clear at this school is that they've begun to get the message across that young people should stick with STEM subjects because it widens their career options and prospects, even if their future careers aren't intrinsically STEM-linked. But what's also clear is that schools need to take positive action amongst staff to fully understand STEM careers. Using activities like this one, they can show the importance of economic well-being and drive the STEM message home.